Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. Mark chapter number 12 is where we're going today. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn there with me. Mark chapter number 12. As we set forth to champion the work of Jesus Christ, And as we set forth to build champions for the kingdom of God, there are some foundational truths that we must put in place if we're going to champion the cause of Jesus Christ around us. What are those truths, those foundational elements, is the truth of the power of love. Love. This week we're going to celebrate love. To all of you men, that is the shot across the bow for you guys. That is your reminder. You've got a few days to prepare, brothers. Get busy. If you're not prepared, get prepared. The hours are counting down. I'd rather bless the Lord with you than to have a funeral for you next week. So you've got a couple days to prepare. As we celebrate love together. You know, as we do and uh, in whatever form or fashion that you choose to celebrate that time, my prayer is that we will understand this week the power that love holds for our lives. You know, what we do with our lives and our time says a lot about the priorities of our lives. This morning, if I were to go around the room and to ask you what uh, you've done this weekend, what activities you've engaged in and what activities you've been involved in, you know, you may have been like a lot of people that I saw yesterday. Uh, The the nice weather, we're in February, but it was springtime weather yesterday and everybody was out. All the fellas had motorcycles out and people were washing their cars. I, I saw, we came through town, I even saw a guy out washing his house yesterday. It is amazing what happens when the temperature comes up and people are able to get outside and and do things. But I wonder what we spend our time, our energies, and our efforts on. See, we can spend a lot of our time doing good things. Good things. But I wonder how much of our time do we commit to doing great things. You've probably heard it said, The main thing is that the main thing stays the main thing. And one of those main things in our lives as believers, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, is love. Love is the determiner of your priorities. Love is the litmus test for our commitments. Love in your life is not passive, but it is rather active. Love is defined as an intense feeling of deep affection. An intense feeling of deep affection. The word love is not cheap, is not whimsical, but rather love is intense. Love is deep. Love is not passive. Much the opposite, it is the love of country. That causes men and women to serve their country and their nation. And many times even at the expense of their own lives. It was the love of God for you and for me. That caused God to send his one and only son Jesus Christ. Not to be a good man. Not to be a prophet. Not to be a teacher. Though he was those things. It was love for you and I. That caused God to send his son Jesus Christ for one reason. To die upon a cross that you and I might be brought into right relationship with God. Parents, their love for their children will cause them to give up all for the benefit of their kids. Love is powerful. It's a driving force in our lives. Those whom we love 
or the ideas we love will cause us to give up all to keep them. Love will drive one to do things that many will see as irrational and illogical. Love is powerful. This morning we're going to take a few minutes and we're going to look at what the Word says about love. How do we love? What do we make sure that we need to do that love stays the greatest thing in our lives? Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, we find here Jesus is uh, confronted with the Pharisees and the Sadducees. The Herodians are there and they're arguing and they're debating over what the greatest commandments and what the thoughts of Jesus are. Verse number 28 says, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. There are many things that you and I can give ourselves to, many things we can give our time, our heart, our energy. But the words that Jesus said was this, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all of your strength. If at the end of the day, the week, the month, after you and I have expended all of our energies, if we have not loved the Lord, then we've done a lot of good things but not the greatest thing. So what I want to do this morning is take a few minutes and answer a few questions. The first question is this. Why is this the greatest commandment? Why is this the greatest command? I would submit to you this morning it's the greatest command because he's worthy of our love. He's worthy of our love. Every person who's gathered together in this place today has the capacity to love. Every day that you live your life, you spin down that capacity to love on something. Maybe you would say, I love my wife. Guys, there's your second reminder. I'm on your side, guys. Maybe you say, I love my wife or I love my husband. I love my kids. I love my job. I love my house where I live. I love my church. Maybe some of you say, I have activities and hobbies in life that I love to do. Some of you, maybe your thing you love is cooking. For some of you, you love what they love. They cook, you love to eat it. <laughs> so many things we ascribe the word love to. Every day you and I spin down that capacity love on something. And when you get to the bottom of that capacity, friend, if you haven't loved the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength, then you and I have spent our capacity to love things that are temporary and things that will not last. God is worthy of our love. Nothing and no one is more worthy of your love than God. Exodus 15 and verse 11 says this, Who among the gods is like you, Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? Who is like you and what would the answer to be? What would the answer be? No one. No one. No one. 
Psalm 35 and verse 10, my whole being will exclaim, who is like you, Lord? You rescue the poor from those too strong for them, the poor and the needy from those who rob them. Psalm 71 and 19, your righteousness, O God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, God? Psalm 89 and verse 8, who is like you? Lord God Almighty, you, Lord, are mighty and your faithfulness surrounds you. When you understand the power, when we understand the might of our God and the awesomeness of our God, when we understand who he is and who he's made us to be, when we understand how he's been faithful and true, when you understand the depths that he's went to for you and for me, and then we compare the trivial things that we love, often in the place of the God who really is worthy of our greatest love. Friends, we love him, and it's the greatest commandment because he is worthy of our love. Not only is he worthy of our love, but it's the greatest command because when we realize all the good things that he does for us. Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With all my heart, I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Can you say amen? amen. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sin. Can you say amen again? Amen. He heals all my disease. Can you say it again? He redeems from my death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. I like this part. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. When I think about the Lord, when I think about the good things he does for me, when I think about the things that I don't deserve that he does for me, when I think about the things that I, I, I should have and the things that I really have. It's no wonder the psalmist David said, let all that is within me bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me bless his holy name. Friend, when it's difficult, we're blessed. When it hurts, we're blessed. Even when it looks terrible ahead, we're blessed. May we never forget the good things he does for me. I wish I could tell you throughout my life how he's been faithful. But the truth is, I don't have words to adequately describe to you how faithful my God has been to me. I can't tell you today how many times he's been faithful because there's more than I have the ability to count. I wish I could tell you about how great his faithfulness has been. I wish I could tell you about the times I called on him and he answered, but there's too many because he, listen to me, he has always been faithful. He has always been faithful. I can't tell you today that I've got it bad because there's no amount of bad that is greater than his good in my life. That didn't get in. Nope, that didn't get in. People say, uh, how you ha Yo, what's your day like? I'm having a bad day. You ever had a bad day? You thought you were having a bad day? Come on, folks. <laughs> yeah, you go. Know, we've had days. We have, man, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. It's a bad day. Yeah. Listen, when I think about how many good things he does in my life, I can't. I can't pull myself to say I've got a bad day going because there's more good things he does for Jerry. There's more good things he does for you. There's more good ways he's faithful to you. There's more good things he's accomplished in your life than the bad has ever had the ability to even get started on. There's so many good things that he's done for us. That's why I love him. That's why I praise him. That's why I'm committed to him, because he is committed to me. The reason that I can love, friend, is because he first loved me. 
1 John chapter 4, verse 9 says, This is real love. Notice what it says. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. He sent Jesus when you didn't love him. He sent Jesus when you didn't care about him. He sent Jesus when you were busy doing your thing. He sent Jesus in the answer that you would need. He sent Jesus to be the answer for your life. This is real love. Not that we loved him, but that he loved us. First John 4 and 19 says, we love because he first loved us that's why i love him because he's worthy and friend he's done so much for me how how can we not love him when we understand how worthy he is and we reflect on how much he loves us secondly not only is it because he's worthy but we've got to ask ourselves how do i do it How do I love him with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my mind, and with all of my strength? He says, you are to love the Lord with all your heart. The Greek term is cardia, which speaks of the very center or the core of our being. It is the base where your personality is rooted. Proverbs 4, verse 23 says this, above all else... Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. How dangerous it can be for our lives if we don't guard our hearts. There are things that though they are good, they're not the greatest, and therefore we must guard our hearts from them. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Because it says everything you do flows from the heart. People say, well, I do it because of this. I do it because of that. I do it because they said this. and I do it because they did that. and I did it because of this situation. The Bible says everything you do, friend, flows out of your heart. Bill Bright, who led Campus Crusade for Christ for many years, said this. Your heart is like a throne. And it's one of two ways. Either you're on the throne of your life or Christ is on the throne of your heart. And you're kneeling before him saying, Lord, I give it all to you and whatever you want for my life is yours. Friend, the heart is the very center and the core of our being. God wants to be loved from that place in your life. When Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, that's what he meant from the very core of your being. All that you are to love the Lord with all of my heart is to allow him to be seated on that throne of my life and to be the ruler of over my life. We're to love the Lord with all our heart. Jesus continued on. He said, you're to love the Lord with all your soul. It has been said the closest English term to the word soul is the word emotion. The night that Jesus was arrested in the garden just before his crucifixion, as he is praying there, he said in Mark 14 and verse 34, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He described the soul as the place where he felt the greatest emotion Psalm 103, 1 and 2, we read it earlier. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Loving God in the place of my life where there is feelings. If we never have any feelings about God, no tears of joy over his goodness, No passion in following him. No joy that is our strength. No delight in his word. No compassion for his people. Friend, we have missed loving him as we have been created to. When we have feelings for God, 
we're loving him with our soul. There are those who will say you can't be emotional in serving God. If you do, you'll get all carried away and it'll all be wrapped up in your emotion. I do believe that God is a God of balance. And I believe he's called us to be a people of balance. But I also know this. I am emotional because I'm created in his image. The Bible tells us God is a God of emotions. All you got to do is open your Bible and you'll find that God gets angry. How many of you know that's a tough day when God's angry? There's days when God is angry, days when God sorrows, days that God delights, days that God has compassion. Zephaniah 3 and 17 says, For the Lord your God is living among you. He is a mighty Savior, and he will take delight in you with gladness. With his love, he will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with joyful songs. He's a God with emotions, and we are his people, and he created us with emotions inside. We're to love the Lord with all of our heart, and we're to love him with all of our soul. Jesus goes on when he says, you're to love the Lord with all your mind. What's my mind? It's the place of my thinking, my meditation, my reasoning. The mind is a place of thinking and feeling. Thoughts, whether they be good or bad, it's the place of deep thought. May I ask you today, are you serving God with your mind? Is God being loved? Is God being honored in your thoughts? What do your thoughts say about how much you love the Lord? You see, to love the Lord with your mind is to submit your thinking and your reasoning to him. You see, we won't often act on the outside for fear of what somebody might think. We won't do something on the outside for what God might think when he sees it. But my friend, know this today. God knows everything about you, and God knows everything about me. God knows my thoughts, the Bible says, from afar off. God knows the words that are on my tongue before I speak them. Listen, you're not more righteous just because you don't do it on the outside and you do it on the inside. It's going to get quiet in the house this morning. That doesn't make you more spiritual because you carry on on the inside and don't do it on the outside. God knows everything about us. God knows my mind. God knows my thoughts from afar off. There's not even a word that comes to my tongue that my God is not aware of that word. Love the Lord with all your mind. Listen, it's time that we come to another level. It's time that we come to a place of usefulness in the kingdom. He is calling us out to love the Lord with all our minds. If we're not careful, our minds can be a part of the sinful world around us. Romans 8 verses 5 through 8. Those who live according to the flesh have set their minds On what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile towards God. Have you wondered as you've been watching the news? Have you wondered as you're seeing things in the world today? The hostility against God? The hostility against believers? Listen, friend. It's because the mind that is governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It doesn't submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So how do I love God? With my mind. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your what? Your what? Your mind. And to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Romans 12 and verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. 
Love the Lord with all your heart. Love the Lord with all your soul and your emotion. Love the Lord with all your mind, the place of your thinking, the place of your reasoning. Love God in the place of your meditation. Love him in your thinking. May there be no parts dark in our lives, even in the area of our thinking. Next, he says we're to love him not only with our heart, not only with our soul and our mind, but he says love the Lord your God with all of your strength. This gives us a picture of physical capacity. Each day, beginning a fresh capacity to love him with our energy, our vitality, our strength. Each day we began with a new capacity to love him with our strength. The question we must ask today and we must come to an answer is, what will we spend our strength on? You see, there are many good things that we can spend our strength on. And at the end of the day, when the day comes to a close and we've spent our strength, and if it's not been on the greatest things, we've missed loving God with all of our strength. There's a life to live. There are duties in this life to be fulfilled. How many of y'all are going to go to work tomorrow? Is it, is it like vacation week or what? <laughs> How many of y'all are going to work tomorrow? Either that or everybody retired since last Sunday. <laughs> you're going to go to work. There's duties you're going to have to fulfill. The truth is, how many of you here are parents? If you're a parent, you're busy. You say, well, they moved out. Well, now you get to help with their kids. <laughs> and the truth is, if you're here and you're not a parent, you're busy. Life is so busy right now. I talked to some of our college students, and they are so busy I will have to tell you, I'm glad that season of my life is behind me. It is a very busy time. Life has the ability to keep us occupied and keep us drawn in. There are many things in this life we must do. But friend, while in the business of doing, don't forget the greatest thing. Loving God with the strength he has given you is your greatest thing you have to accomplish today. It's more important than anything else that I have. Don't forget to make God a part of your day. Don't allow the good things to push out your time with the greatest thing, and that's God. Love him with your strength. The other day, I was preparing to go on a flight. And as I uh, has become a ritual for me, when I'm heading to the airport, I will pray on the way. It's a good thing to do before you go to the airport. And I'll say, Lord, would you give me strength today? Will you give me wisdom today? Will you give me clear mind and clear thoughts I need you today to take good care of me. And I ended with this phrase, Lord, I give you my day. Well, I'll be honest with you, that was about halfway through the day. And I said those words, and the Holy Spirit said to me, what about the other part of your day? You ever had those times the Holy Spirit just kind of out of nowhere? You weren't anticipating it, and the Holy Spirit shows up and just kind of smacks you a little bit. <laughs> And I got thinking, you know what? I needed him when I put my feet on the floor. I needed him this morning when I opened my eyes. I needed him when I got in the car and was driving. I needed him in everything that I had to accomplish. I needed him in every waking moment of my day. And friend, I would remind you of this. There's nothing you can do in this life separate from God. There's nothing in this life that you can't say, God... Don't worry about it. I've got this one covered. I'll take care of it. He says, I want you to love me with all of your strength. What that means is everything my strength will be spent on today. I want to love him with that. 
all my energy he's given me. I want to love him with the energy he's given me. Notice, is to love the Lord with all your strength. You will notice on each one of these parts, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. All of my heart, all of my emotion, all of my mind, all of my strength. Lord, I want you to have all of me. I want to hold back no part of my heart from you, no part of my emotions that I kind of keep as my own. And God, this is my space. That's yours, but this is my space. No part of my mind and my thinking that it's like, God, I'm okay over here. I'm going to keep this little part to myself. I'll do it with you out here. But this is my little area, all my mind, all my strength. Does that mean all day long all I think about is God? No. I'm, I'm just being real with you. Some days, have you ever had the kind of day where you get the day started and it's just like a whirlwind, and you get to the end of the day, and you're like, where did the day go? I mean, it's flown by. Listen, you and I live a busy life. We live a hectic life. Here's what God is looking for from you and I. That though I have to think about a lot of things, and there's a lot of things that I like to think about. I like to think about hobbies. I like to think about doing things. I like to think about going out and eating supper with my wife. I like to think about, how many of y'all like to think about vacations? How many of y'all like to think about spring? Yes, it's coming. I've got good news. We're closer than we were. It's coming. I like to think about those things. That's okay. That's okay. Some of you have hobbies. We had, we had a bunch of ladies here yesterday, and they were doing uh, crafts together and they're in there, and everybody's got their own little thing, and they're doing their own thing, and some of them are making things, and some of them are drawing things and writing things. and They enjoy doing it. They get together. They laugh. They have fun. That's all okay. So how do I love him with all of me, and yet I have these other things in my life? It's this. I like those things. But those things in my heart does not compare to the space that God gets. I'll be honest with you. I love my wife. We've been married a long time. And we're going to be married a lot longer time. And I love her. But not like I love Jesus. And you know what? She's okay with that. Because... She'll look at you in the face. She'll say, I love you, but boy, not like I love Jesus. And you know what? I love my kids, but not like I love Jesus. I love all of you. I can't tell you how much I love to be here on Sunday with all of you and come in and worship. I can't tell you what happens in my heart when we get together. And I, we're worshiping and I'm looking. I love being where I'm at because I get to look and see all of you worshiping. And, and you're excited. You're worshiping. And there's so much life. I love that. And I love you. But not like I love my Jesus. And so how do I love him with all my heart, all my soul, my mind, and my strength? He is the greatest priority of my life. Yes, there are other things in life that I have to do and other things I have to be. But none get the place that he gets in my life. Would you bow your heads? My heavenly Father and my Savior, Jesus, I stand before you in this place and stand before these men and women. And Lord, my heart today, my heart is challenged. My heart is challenged when I look at the trivial things that I give my energy to in this life. 
And I'm so tempted to let those things get out of proper alignment. So tempted to allow those things to take a higher place in my life than what they ought. Lord, I want you to know that today that I do love you. But I'll be honest with you, Lord, I want to love you more than I did yesterday. I want all of my strength, my greatest strength I've got, I want it to be for you. My thoughts, oh God, you know my thoughts from afar. I want to love you, God, with my thoughts. God, you know my emotions. God, you know how sometimes we get so, so wrapped up in our emotion. And we are, we worry, we fret, we are angry. God, we want to love you with that part of our life. We want to love you with our emotions. The deep part of who we are. Father, you challenged us to guard our hearts because it is the gate to our life. Whoever controls the heart controls the life. God, today you're able to look into the deep recesses of our hearts. God, I want to love you in that place. God, I want to love you in that place, that part of my life that nobody can see but you. I want to love you, Lord, with everything that is in me. Lord, I do love you, and I pray today that you'll help us to love you even more. So, Lord, as we set forth this year and our future in you to walk as champions of the faith, Lord, let us settle this matter quickly. Let us settle this matter up front. To love you with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's how I'd like to close this morning. Folks, this is the thing between you and, and him. Because nobody can see in your heart. A few may get glimpses of your soul, your emotion. Most never fully see your mind. And often many don't see what you spend your energy and your strength on. But I'd like to close this time by saying, Lord, all these areas of my life, I give them today and I surrender them to you. God, I want the greatest strength of my day to be for you. I don't want to give God my leftovers. I want to give him the best that I have. God, I want you to be honored in my thinking and my acting. God, I want you to be honored in the deep, seated part of what makes me who I am. I want you to be honored in those ways. So today, I'd like to open the altars for prayer, and I'd like to invite you in just a few moments to come, and you can kneel around these steps. You can kneel around the uh, front rows. You can kneel in between. I'd just like to invite you today to come and spend some time in prayer. And maybe, I don't know, maybe that's something that you're not accustomed to or, or used to doing. I'd like to invite you to do something out of the ordinary. As an act of faith. And really, you know what, friends? When I, when I bow down, it's really I'm in a place of yielding. I'm making myself lower. So he can be higher. It's a sign outwardly of what's going on inwardly. And I'd like to encourage you to find a place of prayer somewhere. 
if physically possible for you to find a place to kneel down and just to pray and just to make it, Lord, Lord, I want you, I want to love you with all my heart. And friend, if there's areas that he, the Holy Spirit begins to say, you know what? Hey, this little area here in your heart, just, just be, Lord, I'm so sorry. Lord, would you forgive me? I want to love you with all my heart. Lord, I want to love you with all my soul. I want to love you with all my mind. God, I want to love you with all my strength. Everything that makes Jerry Galloway who he is, God, I want to love you with all that. So that's how I'd like to close our time. We won't have a dismissal prayer. When, when you feel dismissed to leave, feel free to do so, my friend. And if you want to stay as long as you want, it, the altars will be open. And I just want to encourage you to find a place. And on this Sunday, early in the year, let's set forth the love of God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. As Paul begins to sing, would you come? And let's just spend some time in prayer in his presence. God bless you as you come this morning.